What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number five. In this episode, we are going to be finalizing the control arms, pulling the transmission out, prepping for the other transmission, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, if you missed the first four episodes, uh, you can just look them up. You know how to do that. Let's get started. My name's Bruce Cook. I'm always on four wheels, so I might as well make them big. It's a new day, and I found some tube. My handsome friend Jared happened to have some extra, so picked it up and ready to cut some upper links. Since I can't find anything to high enough to support this, or low enough, grabbing my friend Anvil here, and he's gonna hold up the end with a sling or something. Two bends on. Boom. Obviously the tops aren't attached because it's a hassle and I just need to take them out again, but everything's the right length and looks good. So it's exciting. I'll get them back out, probably weld them up fully and uh, one step closer. I'll have to get the coilovers in place at some point to make sure those work and then I can weld all that up fully too. And those, and that, and that, and that, and everything. Moving up to the front, I think I'm confident enough within about an inch to cut my front radius arms. Um, I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna make it go to the top and then Y the bottom or vice versa, but I'll get them cut and then I can weld the clevises on the end and uh, might have to trim off a bit at the back depending where I end up with the axle, but it'll be close enough. As you can see, I got the radius arm hooked up to the bottom. I made that call just for clearance from the frame, which it actually sits just inside, but with flex and everything, the truck's sitting pretty high right now and that angle isn't too bad. Uh, it actually looks worse on camera for some reason. And also, there's gonna be some exhaust clearance issues also. So for the benefit of putting it up a few inches, um, I'm happy with this and it's gonna give me a bit more room. So for now, that's good. If it handles terrible, I'll change it. Since I'm waiting on some joints for right there where the Y attach on the radius arm, I'm going to extend the uh, steering shaft that goes down to the steering box, which I took out and I'm gonna go cut it in half and weld some pipe in. Got that cut. So now I'm gonna find hopefully some tube or pipe or something that I can sleeve inside there, add a few inches and weld it back up. So, turns out it's a bit of a weird size, but pretty close. So, gonna add a few inches there, cut that, weld that. Just kidding, I'm not welding, because it's steering. You don't do that. Got her uh, glued together there. Actually, no, this is a new one. I bought a new one, that's what I did. I did not. Sleeve those two pieces with an extra three and a half inches and weld it together. I got a new one because that is legal. Next up, I'm cutting the tie rod. So I'm putting a straight edge against the knuckle here. Same thing on the other side. And I'll measure in front of the axle and behind the axle and make those two measurements exactly the same. So the 
um, steering is parallel, the knuckles are parallel. And then take a measurement with the uh, heim joints, about 50% of the thread for adjustment in and out, because one's left hand, one's right hand. And then I'll cut some tube for that and also won't weld that because that's not legal. I got the tie rod cut. Put a bit, ouch, put a bit of an edge on there. And pull the slide in just perfect. So I won't weld there and then it won't grind it down. So it looks like it's just a threaded end. Pro tip. And just like that, we got a uh, tie rod that's not welded. It's got uh, threaded ends, so that's perfect. Let's go mount it up. The knuckles are tied together. Boom, another thing done. On to the next. Next up, I'm going to drill a couple holes to throw a couple bolts through. Uh, I am going to be welding these towers, but since I didn't fish plate the frame, um, it's just a little bit of added security. I'm also going to be tying them in at the top, but I'm punching a couple through just in case. Um, but a trick um, for me and anyone in a chair or in my situation, when you're drilling like this, you don't have a ton of power because you tip back with the chair so because there's nothing to pull it um, push against so you can grab here and push in but that gets tiring especially when you're drilling through pretty thick so what i do and this obviously doesn't work all the time has to be the right kind of situation but i grab a clamp this is one of those quick clamp deals right on there It's pulling on my brake line, but that's okay because I'm not using it. And then, uh, stay there. I just clamp and I don't have to push hardly at all. So it's kind of like one of those magnet deals, except not $1,500. And we're through with fairly little effort. Now that the back end is pretty much wrapped up, <clears throat> I'm just waiting for a little bit warmer day to uh, do some welding so I can open up the door because it gets pretty nasty in here and there's a lot of welding to do. Switching gears a little bit, as you can see, maybe the exhaust's hanging down. So taking that out and I'm gonna tackle the transmission swap. I got the 4L80 uh, that's out of a uh, three quarter ton sitting out back. I gotta do a slip yoke eliminator on the front of that. Uh, in the next couple days, and then take the 4L60 out. It's obviously a much stronger transmission, and I'm gonna go with the floor shift as opposed to the electronic shift, mostly just because that eliminates problems. Uh, these transmissions or transfer cases have some problems with uh, not engaging right away or at all, so can't be having that back in the bush. So nothing like a good solid floor shifter, which apparently it works. You can stub it through the floor uh, beside the center console, but I'll find out. I'm not going to cover a ton of this. Um, I've been dreading this part quite a bit. Um, going to need some help for this. There's no way I'm going to do this by myself. Probably could, but I don't feel like spending a week doing it. And uh, it'll be sweet to get that out. But I'm at that point because once I get links on and all that stuff, it's going to be a pain to get in there. So I might as well do it now while it's completely open. So Tom's going to help me with that for now. Tearing the exhaust off and getting it all prepped to where we can just get it out of there and get the other one in when he shows up. Got the 4L80 and uh, NP261 on the bench. Already did the slip yoke eliminator. So now it's got the flange for CV style drive shaft. It was pretty straightforward, but a real pain to get that seal out. It's like this two part seal that sucks. Um, so that's good. Just waiting on a couple little pieces to put that back together while I'm in there. And the cross member I have to change. First of all, I have to cut down 
the existing cross member for the drive shaft to clear. So I've got this piece that I cut that I'm gonna weld under there and then just notch this out so the drive shaft clears. So I'm tacking it on right now to hold it enough for me to take it out so it holds it all in one place and we'll go back in. I'll have to support the transmission, blah, blah, blah. Pop those out and then I can finish weld it on the bench and it'll be good to go. Another thing I'll have to do here is the new transmission's a bit longer, so I'll have to get a piece of angle iron, come back here, because the mount holes will be back here. So, not too bad. So unfortunately, my camera died at the, I don't know, somewhere through the time lapse of pulling the transmission out and didn't save it for some reason. But, got that out. 4L60 is over there. 4L80 is there, just waiting on a couple little parts to make the transfer case, transfer case better. And then it can go back in. So today I will probably do some welding on the control arms and get those buttoned up. So while I'm waiting for the part to come in, which is this stupid little clip here, it's from factory, broke, sits on this. It's for the uh, oil pump for the transfer case. And these little fins like to cut through the casing. So this is magnesium, that's aluminum, it's harder, it cuts through, so it just vibrates over time. And this was Chevy's fix, I guess, that didn't work. And for some people actually sends this through the gears and whatnot. So you find this in the magnet, but it's a new and improved, clip like this that's bigger, wider, bigger footprint for there, uh, and the flex plate. So I'm waiting for those to come in. Should be here tomorrow. So in the meantime, did some welding, completely welded all the control arms. I don't know if you can see, they're welded. And finished welding on all the brackets and everything onto the axle. So putting that off for a while so that was good to get done and now I'm playing around with the front coil over towers um, I had some hard brake lines in the way that one right there kind of hard to see attached there and uh, I thought with leaning the tower out about uh, five more degrees I could clear it but it's just too tight so I'm seeing if I can get some flex lines built and uh, we'll get that into place. Alrighty, parts came in, <clears throat> got the transfer case back together. Um, slip yoke eliminator is in. It's definitely a two person job getting this thing back in because there's a stupid little C clip in there that you have to hold. You need to line this up for the uh, front output to go into the bearing that sits right here. So. Um, yeah, definitely needed an extra set of hands, so I got my dad's help for that. Um, got the brake lines made up. Get out of the way, big tire. Oh, tough to see. Which, by the way, I got the uh, shock towers tacked in. Uh, but yeah, I can't really see it all. That's a flexible brake line right there that I got made up for way too much money. I was blown away. Uh, but anyway, got that in, and now uh, I'm waiting on coil springs for the coilovers, and uh, what else? Oh, a couple uh, joints for the top bar on the radius arm. So I'm playing with track bar and uh, drag link. So you want those running at the same angle uh, and about the same length. So I think I'm happy with this. Gonna have to change up um, a little bit here because it's on an angle, so I'll have to take a bit off that. And honestly, that's what I love about these TMR brackets. Oh, another thing I love um, is that they come not assembled, so you have to weld them together yourself, which also means you can make changes to them for your application. For example, the axle side track bar mount, I took off I don't know, two or three inches here. 
and uh, cut that, cut that. So now it's a little stubby and sits off to the side. And now I can weld it together myself. Whereas if this came all welded together already, that would be a lot more difficult and you wouldn't really want to cut that apart anyway. So things are looking good. As soon as the uh, coils come in, then the rear end will be completely on its own weight. That's all welded up. And the front, I'll be able to mock up. And uh, as soon as the joints come in, which should be about the same time, I can get the radius arms finished. There's the big ones. There's pieces of little ones. Um, the reason I'm not using those is because they're like two and five eighths. So I'd have to make a weird bracket that goes to the, the two inch tube and it would just kind of look dumb. So I'm waiting for those. It'll just look cleaner. They don't have to be super strong. And then this thing will be on its own weight. That'll be cool. I can finish weld those and then I'm going to tie the top together with a removable bar uh, from one side to the other. And I guess I can get the axles put back together sometime too. It's coming. So I just uh, got the transfer case floor shift mounted and I didn't film any of that because A, it took a billion hours and was super finicky and tight and whatnot. And B, it just doesn't look very good. Bit of a hack job, but um, it'll get the job done. So you see what happened was, I cut the hole over there originally, but uh, didn't have the transfer case in the gear that I thought it was in. So it changed the measurement there, but got it in, got that patched up, slapped a little silicone on for, for good measure and it'll work. It's not the prettiest, but you're not gonna see it under here anyway. So suck it. On another note, springs came in. They're a bit longer than I thought. Pretty much goes right up to the top of the adjustment, so hopefully they're squishy. Uh, these are the rears. I did 200 over 300. And on the fronts, the big dogs there, I did uh, 300 over 400. That was an S or uh, educated guess. And not very educated guess, so we'll see how it turns out. Now it's time to make some drag links and track bars. So I think I'm happy with where the axle side track bar bracket sits. Got it level there with all my caster and everything adjusted-ish. So I'm gonna tack that one in place. That one's already tacked in place. And then uh, we can measure up for uh, drag link length and track bar length. perfectly parallel. The uh, pitman arm's gonna suck up there a little bit on the spline, so should be perfect. A um, little steeper than I'd like, but it will also sit down a bit better, or a bit more, so it's gonna be a bit better. Overall, decently pleased. Gonna finish up welding some of this stuff. I've made my finalish decision. Radius arms are going to the top for now. Uh, I made them kind of as short on the thread as possible so that if I needed to, I could put them to the bottom because that would require them to be a bit longer. I could just thread them out, should work. Now I'm torquing the ball joints, getting the axle back together because it's coming pretty close to time to uh, get this thing on its own weight. Still waiting on those joints for there, unfortunately. Um, back's done, yeah, let's, let's get some things torqued. It's a little thing, but got the axles put back together. First time they've been like that in a while. Worn hubs, manual locking hubs. Got some new U-joints in there. Yeah. Those are all tidied up. 
Looking good. So I haven't been filming a whole bunch the last few days, mostly because it's just been little things like welding up brackets that hadn't been done yet and switching out bolts and, and boring stuff that you don't really want to see. Um, did get the axle back together, but uh, now I'm going to be, oh, doing a couple more things that I want done before the transmission is in, which one of them is the uh, cross member between the radius arm frame mount brackets. Um, do they need it? Probably not, but uh, for what it is, I'm just going with some light wall, one inch pipe, uh, eighth wall, or one inch square tube, I should say, and then some uh, 3 16 flat bar to make a bracket. So it's a removable cross member between the, the radius arm mounts, and it'll just strengthen it a bit for mostly when the truck flexes because um, obviously most of the movement is straight up and down so it's fine for that but I figured for the amount of weight that it adds why not so I'm gonna get that made up now so this is where I'm talking about between there and there which they're very solid they're bolted and I'm probably gonna weld them but they do hang down so for what it's worth just gonna slap a bar in there. And just like that, got ourselves a cross member. Like I said, it's not super beefy, but it should do the trick. I know that for you, that probably was about 10 seconds to make this when in reality, things take much longer. This thing probably took me oof, over two minutes to make for sure. That's gonna do it for this episode, getting a bunch closer. So be sure to stay tuned, subscribe, like all that stuff, and we will see you next time.